Good morning. Welcome to Admiral Markets. My name is Chris. Today's focus is on strategy uh, in this live webinar, and we're going to take a look at the Forex market, uh, the currency pairs, and uh, some other financial instruments that you might find interesting. Just feel free to chat anytime. Good morning, Beverly. Good to see you. And other familiar faces, I would say, but it's actually names, unfortunately. But um, we got uh, these disclaimers to discuss, first of all. This webinar is shown to a global audience, but may not be suitable for everyone. Please take a look at AdamoMarketsGlobal.com, select your country of residence, and contact an appropriate entity to find out more about that and other details. Also, please be aware that trading for exchange or global financial markets, uh, trading those are considered high risk and may not be suitable for everyone. Please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. This webinar is not advice and is for informational and educational purposes only. And by continuing watching this webinar, you agree with this disclaimer and you're aware of the risk involved when trading. Alrighty, thank you so much for your attention on that. Let's take a look at uh, the following I wanted to still share with you actually is the fact that Admiral Markets has a special two month window where you can uh, get a deposit bonus that's for both existing and current traders at Admiral Markets. Uh, sorry, both existing and new traders. Um, so if you haven't joined Admiral Markets yet, this might be a very good opportunity to do so. Get that bonus, uh, use it as a margin. And if you have sufficient volume uh, after six months, then um, you, know, you can unlock that bonus and that capital is yours. There are other conditions and details you want to take a look at and risk disclaimers that you can find on admiralmarkets.com. Uh, if you're an existing customer, it might uh, you know, be a good um, moment to add some capital and you can uh, you know, benefit from that as a trader. So if you're a current trader at Admiral Markets, it also could be something for you. So take a look. There's a slider and you can see exactly what your bonus uh, could be depending on uh, the capital that you're thinking about adding. As always, uh, let's take a look at the calendar and uh, we got uh, tonight... Uh, we have FOMC Mitty Minutes. That's always a big one. That's a red tagged event. And otherwise, we have council meeting, which is red tagged, apparently. And uh, some lighter news, as you can see. Always take a look at the risk calendar that's uh, or economic calendar. That's part of a trading plan. As uh, indicated yesterday in our Pro Learning Lab webinar, we had very important. All right, so some movers here, some uh, stock indices, <clears throat> some stocks to the downside. Regarding currency pairs, you can see here uh, a bit of a slower volatility day, maybe. Uh, although we do have some 1% fall below 1%, for instance, some yens. New Zealand CAD, all yen, pound yen. So yen probably one of the bigger movers yesterday. <clears throat> Let's see. Not really. Interesting. Maybe it was primarily the uh, actually the pound pushing it more than the yen side. Pound again first, dollar medium or lower medium. A mover, Aussie second. All right, pretty pretty standard picture for, or image for the last few months, perhaps, I guess. Let's take a look at the live charts now. Let me pull over this chart from a different screen. <clears throat> there we go. All righty. Well, we're getting already a break uh, very early on in the in the in the session. A uh, bit of a triangle formation right here on the five-minute chart, and uh, we're getting we got a break already. About well, what was it? Two hours ago, basically in the Asian session. So that's a quite a bit early, and the price is now retesting this bottom. So with this break, uh, in fact, it's really starting to doubt whether. Uh, we still have a, one important support line, of course, right here, and 141, 140.75. That could still be a bouncing spot. You never know with the pound USD. That could certainly cause a, a bit of a rally as well. But I don't think that this is going to be that very impulsive ABC zigzag that I first thought when it was correcting down to here and bounced off this trend line. Right? That that kind of changed. We clearly had a break of this trend line, and now the smaller triangle. So uh, basically what we were talking about yesterday, patterns after patterns, 
smaller patterns after medium or big patterns is occurring right now. We had a medium triangle, and after that medium triangle, we had a small triangle, as you can see. So those are typically pretty good breaks. In this case, there's a third dimension to it because there's an even bigger triangle. So we have three levels of triangles. we got massive triangle right here, um, indicated by the green lines. We have a medium triangle indicated by the blue lines, and then a smaller triangle by these red lines. So although we had a break of the smaller triangle, as you can see, the bigger triangle is, uh, is not too far from here. So if you're in that trade, if you took that break by any chance on the five-minute chart, you were looking at it this morning, and you took this candle or, or even a bit earlier, uh, then um, I would probably be targeting 141. Okay, and put the trail probably, trail stop loss right above this candle high. This candle will close in eight minutes, and if it's a big wick, it might be even worth exiting because that could just be a false break. If this turns into a pin bar, if this is an hourly pin bar, then you know that's not looking like a good breakout, right? If this breakout has a close near the low, then great. I would use the candle high to trail stop that breakout trade and see if the next few candles could be bearish as well. And if they are, it could be worth trail stopping those highs as well until the target is hit, hopefully. All right, if you're not in that trade, if you didn't take that breakout, uh, this, this triangle breakout, or, or perhaps even uh, this from, from yesterday, uh, in that case, I'll probably wait for price to get here and see if there's a bounce trade available. Right, because that's still a level of support that uh, could be strong enough for at least some rally. At least what I would expect, at least, is a rally to um, retrace this entire swing. Swing, at least a swing. I would say maybe that's a bit too ambitious. Um, maybe let's see. Maybe I should use a smaller fib. Okay, let me be a bit more conservative and, and use this as a fib. So if price gets to the zone and, and bounces, I would expect the rally to at least the 23 or the 38.2 fib. Um, so those could be targets to the upside. There's a trend line, resistance trend line coming in as well, right? As you can see. So that would be uh, a, a bearish bouncing spot, of course, as well, potentially. Right, and it could go back down or price could just pause there and start to break. That's something that, in all honesty, which one of those two seems more likely, I I don't know. I, I think that looking at the patterns on all these time frames, both are really just as likely. It's just in a triangle, and uh, it is at the bottom of the triangle, so there could be a chance that price just retest yet again the top of that triangle. So from that point of view, a break to the upside might have a tad more uh, likelihood than, than a bounce, but you never know. This could also be... Uh, kind of a, a descending wedge pattern. So there's, you know, you can you can call it both ways. I think probably the safest way to approach it, uh, the conservative way to approach it is if anyone takes a reversal trade here or a bounce trade off of that triangle, maybe best just to aim for take profit at the fib, right, and then re-enter after it makes a bit of a dip and it starts to show good candles and uh, shows a good breakout. With the close near the high, etc., uh, to re enter that trade. I think technically that would probably be the best way to approach it. Take the profit, and if it does show continuation signals, great. Hopefully, typically, uh, many cases, there is an opportunity to still rejoin uh, that, mo that movement, right? So uh, that's how you can break down parts of the trade if a certain decision zone is, you know, 50 50 could go either way um, then this could be a solution all right so i hope that the story was not too technical and in any case i wanted to say that it's great job that everyone is coming in you know for these webinars i think it really shows uh, a lot of about all of you that you take your time to to come here and and invest time in in um learning and education and going to do webinars like yesterday and Thursday. Uh, so I, I really think that's great. I really appreciate that. I wanted to say that. So 
uh, it shows a great learning uh, attitude. And I, as as we said yesterday in in, in the trading plan uh, webinar, that um, discipline and persistence, probably in anything, right? But maybe even more so, I have a feeling in in trading, uh, are so important. But it'll probably be effective to or applied to everything almost you know we encounter. But um, it's certainly so for trading. All right. Well, any questions on the pound? Does anyone see it differently? Uh, on the daily chart, really, we can see it in, as, a, as a potential inverted head of shoulders, right? With divergence between these bottoms. Uh, so from that point of view, we didn't get to the target yet, as I said yesterday, which is the long-term moving average at the 144 EMA. And that target still could be reached at this point. Let me get rid of this fib. It's causing a bit too much mess. But if price does break through this triangle, the purple lines now, the bigger purple lines, then... Uh, you know, then I wouldn't be, of course, the pattern is broken, first of all, the inverted head and shoulders pattern right here. That would be broken. That's point one. And in that case, the correction, there's a good chance that the correction has been completed. If that trend line and bottom at 147.75 does not break, I think it's still all in play. It's still all valid. Divergence, the inverted head and shoulders, <clears throat> the triangle. And this could just be, you know, a, a, a move back to, to the bottom of the triangle. And not only could we actually move back to the top of that triangle, but there is that chance of even a bigger the, the break of the neckline, which is actually this line, right? The break of that neckline for a bigger kind of retracement. Uh, due to the divergence. If that happens, we can put a fib from here to here, and we see that price respected the 61.8 fib, and the target would be lining up with the moving average, long term moving average 144, at uh, the 272 target here, minus 272, at uh, about 147. So from that perspective, you know, looking at reward to risk, <clears throat> if, if, if one is trading the daily chart, I wouldn't mind taking a reversal trade. Well, uh, you know, there's more potential to the upside than to the downside at this moment, just because support is so close by. Even an entry here when trading off the daily with a stop loss below 140.60, you know, it's looking at a roughly 80 pip stop loss, but if the target is at 147, well, that is also about 540 reward. 540 divided by 80 is about a, just a tad shy of 7 to 1 trade, reward to risk. You know, so from this perspective, it all depends how you look at it. Yes, we do have a, a bearish triangle break on the hourly, and that could have been a great trade for an intraday trader to take it to the downside. But a daily chart, daily chart trader could be looking at this and seeing price fall and thinking, ooh, that's a great opportunity because I'm getting a discount here at, you know, because price is moving into a premium kind of zone where uh, it's getting very close to support, which is reducing that stop loss size. So, and it could still fall further. That's I'm talking about right now, but. Uh, I don't think this is the best spot. There is a bit of a wick here. <clears throat> yes, that's true. I wouldn't consider that necessarily a big reversal sign. So it could fall. If it does fall to 141, stop loss could be 50, 40 pips. And the reward is almost 600. So then you're talking all of a sudden about a 12 to 1 trade. That means that only 1 in 10 times does a trade like that have to work out. And uh, there's money made. So obviously that's that's a good statistic. Now for that trade to take place, it's substantial time that has to occur because we're talking about a 600 pip rally here. Obviously this trade is not going to take one, two, three hours. Make sure that you know anyone who 
Um, any any time that anyone contemplates a trade similar to to this, perhaps or um, anywhere near that uh, size, has to realize that it, it might take long. It could take a week or two, right? Who knows? Uh, so that's something you got to be aware of, be ready for. Obviously, you can. There's possibility to take the risk off the table by moving to break even. <clears throat> That's true, but something you need to, to need to realize. Um, <clears throat> now, of course, if uh, there's a, a strong daily candle that today pushes like this through it, well, then certainly that bullish bigger reversals out of the window, <clears throat> and. Uh, Probably best to, to look for a bit of retracement to the broken triangle. And I would start looking for hunting for a bit of a short there, right? To, to at least trade it down to the 78, if not 88, or even bottom or break of bottom. <clears throat> so that's about it, I think. Alrighty, how about the euro? Well, euro kind of showed why it's so, so difficult to trade those reversals and to trade breakouts after uh, head and shoulders, All right? Look at this, excuse me. Um, might have broken through this trend line, right? On the hourly chart, you can see, look on this hourly, pretty neat trend line. And we were in a triangle at that point, looking at the, the purple trend lines, and we got a break. So we were talking about yesterday about how a breakout trade is difficult and if it's really worth it because it's so risky to trade a breakout reversal against the trend with the support so close by. And now you can see why, because look at all those candles that went nowhere. They actually hooked back to that broken trend line. Then they made, they made one more dash down, but it hardly went anywhere. It just broke this, this bottom by a tad. And already everyone moved up again. Nowhere. So that's why I said yesterday that this five-minute impulse uh, somewhere here, <clears throat> let's see, here, uh, might not be necessarily the, you know, the overriding trending movement for later that day. Now, actually, we did get on a five-minute chart still a decent push, but it's not, you know, it, it's all. Oh, all in all, it was quite a choppy, choppy day with a lot of ups and downs. Uh, not surprising considering, you know, this, this hourly chart and four hour chart because price was fighting against support. So it was using that and bouncing off that. And uh, if we look at that four hour chart, if you look at the four hour candle, you can see that this wick here already kind of indicated a, a bit of a problem for the downside. It didn't close with the close near the low. And the break below the trend line really uh, was very meager. This is not a breakout that I consider to be relevant. All right, I wouldn't say it's a false break because it's not that that bullish, but, but it's not a good breakout either. So um, price action has been going really sideways after that. So we're staying in this triangle, right? Not this type of triangle anymore. Not a contracting triangle, but more of a flat consolidation now. And that's why those, those breakouts against the trend are so risky, because a triangle like that can turn into a flat zone like this. That's the risk. Price didn't even get into that green zone that I talked about yesterday, those targets that would be nice for a bounce. Same story as yesterday. If price does get there, might very well be good bouncing spots. If it gets there, because at the moment, we do have a bullish candle here, and price is just retracing that candle. So it could be already in a bouncing spot as we speak. Let's talk about that a bit more, maybe. 
So 113, 112, 75, I think could be interesting bouncing spots. Let me take off that fib though. Look at this consolidation pattern a bit better. You can see we have a resistance trend line here. So I'm not looking for shorts, personally, uh, because even if it breaks this bottom, it's running right into other support levels. So for me, not interesting. Upside is interesting, um, but it's a bit sensitive uh, because if it breaks this trend line, there is a bit of space, but it's not a ton because we got daily resistance levels at 114.75, 115, or running into all kind of heavy, heavy duty uh, levels that you know, might be very difficult to 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 break. Or probably will not we'll see at least some pause or retracement so there's not a ton of space above that 114 about 7500 pips now it's still a lot if you look at a if you trade on a 50 minute chart right so this is what i would consider an intraday zone it's not a swing swing trade area just because the size is a bit small that's one thing bounce trades here but how about now um is it is it worth trading perhaps as it as it hooks back and uh, i'm on the fence of that i really don't have any i guess yes in a way because it is close to support but i wouldn't want to use these as stop loss placements so <clears throat> because just the fact that the triangle could easily break downside and just bounce off that support level which means that if I do take the trade, I don't like the stop loss here. And the stop loss would be, have to be below 112.75, which increases the risk so much that it's at max a one-to-one -one trade. I don't like that too much, or I don't like that actually, I should say. I, so no, I don't think that there is much, much to do here at the moment. If it breaks uh, this trend line, then a tighter stop loss like this bottom or even the candle low can be used, and that changes the relationship right away. Okay, great, Beverly. Beverly tried to uh, to short that trade, um, but missed that kind of have okay, that flash move down. No, no, flash is maybe the wrong word, but fast move. I think that uh, let's see, ten pips in the red. Well, that should be okay, I think, if it's. Even if it, you know, even if it shows a bullish candle here, right, and retraces that bullish candle, um, you know, that could be already enough to get out. Now, I don't say the downside is necessarily impossible. It's just that for me, um, at this moment, <clears throat> I wouldn't join that trade. If you're still in that trade from based on yesterday, then, yeah, it's a good question. <clears throat> I mean, it's possible, of course, that the triangle could break. It's just that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a coin flip. Or maybe even less than that, just because uh, we did have impulse to the upside here. So, and we do have a, a bit of a four-hour candle here. Um, maybe using two fractals back on the 50-minute chart could be something to think about, but it's not easy indeed at this, at this point. Um, that could be maybe the best, I don't know. Or just using this, of course, and that's uh, if I may, I yeah, it's probably would use this one myself, but all right, let's see. Uh, dollar yen, right? Dollar yen, we talked about it yesterday too. We said daily chart <clears throat> needs to have a good close below that support line with a close roughly near the low. So let's take a look at that candle. What does it look like? Uh, the size of that candle is uh, about 140 pips. Let's make it e let's make it easy for ourselves. 139 to be precise. So, but uh, let's take a look now at the, the close. All right, the close is uh, 35 pips.
away from the low. Now, 35 is pretty neatly one-fourth of 140. 25% is wick. I said yesterday that, you know, within 30 would be okay. Within 20 would be would be perfect. Uh-huh. It's 25, so it's within okay. So uh, from that point of view, I think that, you know, there's a, there's a decent breakout here in the daily chart. And a retracement of that daily candle uh, is interesting for me. We traced already a bit, so if we put a fib on that daily candle, just before we do that, actually, if you if you didn't join yesterday's webinar, you might be wondering what kind of break. It's a break of this triple bottom right here. And uh, basically, we had this consolidation zone. We had a lot of patterns within that zone. We talked about that in detail yesterday, triangle, triangle, uh, channel, and all of those Corrections made a bigger correction. That bigger correction occurred after we had two breaks on the weekly. First of all, we had this trend line break, and we had this bottom break here as well. Uh, plus, we had a head and shoulders pattern. This is a head and shoulders pattern where we had uh, the break after the neckline actually did see a strong reversal occur because we've already fallen uh, at least 1,000 pips from here, right? So this is one of those examples that a reversal trade worked out decently. And divergence and um, um, loss of momentum is very important in, in, in such a, let me say, such a reading or analysis to see if a reversal pattern will, will play out or not. So we, we got a break, we got the pullback, we got a continuation, and the continuation then broke the bigger weekly bottom, and we got a triangle basically uh, below the head and shoulders pattern, or even the ascending, descending wedge here. This is the big pattern, this is basically small medium pattern on the daily chart. So this is looking like the continuation of the continuation. This was the first continuation, or maybe this is even the break, I should say pullback whatever it is uh this looks good for follow through all right especially considering this daily candle so if we put a fib on this daily candle price already hit the 50 um so that's uh one way and it's showing some wicks here on the four hour chart i would say that this is well there's no real clear master candle at the moment this has a wick this is relatively small but in any case, it, it's definitely looking impulsive, and this is looking corrective. So this is looking like a bull flag at the moment, actually. So a break of that trend line could be a, a breakout trade to the downside. A push up, a bounce off this bull flag. Could see price maybe retest. Higher fibs like 111 up in here or the 61.8 fib. Those could be then turning spots for downside. Uh, in my view, a stop loss above yesterday's high should be okay. Um, actually, Beverly said that she moved her stop loss to that point. So her risk has been reduced a lot. And that's, I don't know if anyone saw the trade management webinar that Nenet and I had, but the, the goal with my trade management is always the, the same just what Beverly did. Even though I'm not entirely out of risk, I don't mind moving you know, the stop loss to a point that I still have a small loss, like a quarter or a two-tenths or a tenth or, or 5% or even 40%. Because every reduction in risk at a logical spot for a stop loss really adds up if you do that consistently uh, over a week, over a month, over a year. And it can really add up to a lot of return that is saved just by reducing losses. Why take a full hit you know, if the market is saying that there's a good stop loss placement? If you keep waiting to move the stop loss to... A positive territory 
or a break even. But the market is not giving that spot. A, you might be forcing it. You still do it. Market takes you out. B, you don't do it and you keep risking the full full lot size uh, unnecessarily. And you take a full loss where it really isn't needed. Um, so that's, I think, not, not, not the best practice. I think using logical spots, good spots that According to your trading plan, for me, a daily high, a strong candle breakout with, with a daily candle like that, that high is certainly, you know, certainly a, a great place to use it. Unless you're trading the weekly chart, that might not be a good spot. But for most traders, that would be a great spot. So even though it's a small risk still on the table, uh, that's, that's, from my perspective, not an issue at all and for many traders psychologically they still wouldn't do that because it's it's still a loss but it's not only about winning and losing it's also about how much we win and how much we lose and that is also a very important uh, consideration the next step indeed after that would be move to break even as quickly as as allowed as possible within reason uh then i give it a bit more space the trade try to Allow it some breathing room so that it can move further, get to a bigger profit targets or trail stop it for a bigger run. And as soon as it shows some you know, loss of momentum, as soon as it kind of gets tired in its in its impulsiveness, probably, or it shows that uh, there's not much more to to get out of it, then I tighten the trail again. All right. So. If it hits the 50 fib, that could be it could be the same st story. Did any of these fibs could be good turning spots as long as uh, the stop loss is not not below this top, because uh, that would be dangerous. Though. Any stop loss, of course, can turn into a loss. I'm not saying, but anything below that that level, I think, is technically is not a technical stop loss. You know, it's it's uh, some traders like to use fixed. Stop loss uh, pips to a certain degree that could be okay as long as it still uses a technical spot. The technical spot at this moment is this. That's the best technical stop loss placement. Anything below that is hoping. So um, that that's the most important, I think. Anything otherwise, like a 50, 61, 78, it all depends. You know, if you have more patience. You might want to wait for a better price. It's all about how much you like to, how much anyone would like to trade, and how much uh, like if I like it. Let me say it this way: if I like a trade, uh, I'll be more keen to to put a pending order on the chart or take it at a slightly worse price because I'm willing to accept uh, a worse reward to risk. If I have doubts about a trade, I'll be more demanding. I'll say, okay. I'm not a big fan of this trade, so I will really wait for a great price and a great stop loss placement. Let's say that this is the technical stop loss right here, right? So I'm not trading it if it doesn't reach 111. That would make my stop loss only 40 pips. And in that case, I got such a great stop loss, such a small stop loss size that the reward is so overwhelming that you know it's worth that trade. So if I think about that, I'll be more demanding in my entry. If I'm more skeptical about the odds of that trade, the other alternative is the breakout. In that case, you know that changes things. I don't think that the technical stop loss in that case is needed. If it breaks, then I would be probably going. Um, well, I think just the fractal itself might be sufficient, but but there is always a bit of risk. I mean, tech, obviously the technical one always stays the same. It's just that the stop loss then becomes quite big. So. In this case, I think it's worth the risk to use a tighter one. But stop at the target would be 109. Let me take a look at the pivot points. Oof, S3 at 109.06. The pivot points are, are quite uh, tight here. So S2 is 109.50. So maybe the minus 272 target is better. 
um, as a breakout target. By the way, you can also see price bouncing off 110, just proving yet again how important psychological round levels are uh, as well. Okay, cool, Beverly. That's, I think, very, very, very uh, reasonable to do. I mean, I think it's a great job. I, as you know, I was not keen on, uh, but you never know. I mean, I don't want to, like, say that it's impossible to move down, as I already said before. I'm not a fortune teller here, so I hope that it doesn't fly down and you're like, oh, no, why did I take that trade off? But, yeah, that can happen. But uh, all in all, I think that it's uh, in the long run, I think it was better how you did it. Let me say it this way. All right. Any pair that you want to take a look at? We, we looked quite long at all these uh, majors, actually, but more than usual, maybe. But the the main target, you know, for this breakout is uh, one hundred eight minus two seventy two target for the moment. All right, we could go lower. Who knows? But we want to be careful with the yen. The yen is moving down. We know that the yen doesn't like to move down. Uh, specifically, the Bank of Japan doesn't like that. Uh, so that's something you want to keep in mind. I mean, 108, I think, is a decent target, but you know, we don't know how price will react to that. There could be low volatility, and market could have severely bounced at 108. That's always a, a bit of a difficult uh, part of, of the end side when it's moving uh, down. <clears throat> So do you have a, a currency pair in mind that you would like to take a look at? Do you have any favorites? Pound odd? Cool. Uh, Maria is adding that her target is 105, and uh, that makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, just a tad above my minus 61.8 target, and uh, yeah, that's great. I think that that could definitely, if it breaks below 108, I think that there's, there's a very good chance for that. Pound odd. Let's see. It's a oh, it's a it's a head and shoulders target. Yeah, let's put a fib from here to here. Actually, I'm not sure how you calculate head and shoulders targets. Maybe you calculate this this swing and you add it. That's about uh, 950 pips. Uh, so if we do that here, uh, no, that would actually take us already to target hit. Well, anyhow. Um, Uh, one, let's see, if we put a fib from here to here, 1,000 target is at 107. Uh, let's see. But great stuff, Maria. Thank you for sharing that. Let's take a look at the pound on. Pound yen short Beverly's thinking about we can take a look at pound yen too 80 pips great job but yeah I, I can imagine Beverly indeed but still great job with 80 pips and Ali trading intraday in intra-week which time frame is suitable well intraday 5 minute 15 minute uh, I would not you know look at only those time frames I would look at um, higher time frames too daily we, uh, four hour hourly, but also then the five and fifteen for intraday or thirty for uh, intra week. Uh, you know the five and fifteen not not needed unless you're really specifically timing for an entry, maybe. But most of mostly not uh, majority not uh, one hour four hour um, are the ones to look at. But also uh, at the beginning of the week daily and then 
the weekly. Daily is always just good to look at it every day to see how yesterday's daily candle looked like. So that's always useful. One hour, four hour, but are the, are the main kind of um, battlegrounds, as, as Ned was talking, I think, yesterday, but those terms, um, you know, for a intra-week trade. Yeah, great. I can imagine perfectly. That's great. 80 pips, very nice. And I think that your pound odd is still looking good. We got a doji yesterday on the pound odd, which is in, indicating some indecision. Uh, but there's a w bigger wick on top. Did close slightly bullish yesterday, so you know it's 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 not a great bearish signal, not a great bullish one either. So it's a bit of a mix. Uh, there uh, is a divergence. There is a bit of a slower channel here, so you know it could be winding down. It could be ending this 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 downside as I said yesterday. But yesterday did not necessarily show a lot of reversal strength. Uh, yeah, neutral, I think, is, is, is a good word indeed, perfectly. So from that point of view, let's take a look at four-hour chart. This momentum, however, is still a bit on the strong side, I would say. So this could just be a return here, test this bottom, and I would think a bounce off that bottom is a decent likelihood. I had a, a friend of mine Oh, uh, he used to love reversal trading like that. He would look for divergence on the four-hour chart, uh, look for momentum, right? Look for the, the strong move against the trend. He would label that A. He would look for a retracement back to the 61 and 78.6 fibs, look for bounces there, and trade it to the minus 272 target. That was his signature way of trading. So from his perspective... I think that I'm pretty sure that he would be hunting for longs on these fibs here, a bit lower though. 18640, 18570, with targeting 18950. Now there's a lot to say about that. There is a, a lot of divergence. Uh, but there's also some risk involved. Anyone who did that too soon here on that leg, loss. Anyone did that on that leg, loss. So, you know, there is some uh, caution to be, to know when to do that. It's a reversal trade for all, uh, you know, as, as we clearly know. So that always has some substantial risks. So from that point of view, this time it could be a bit different because I think that this is, a better momentum. Why is it a better momentum here than here? Well, uh, this is one big candle and um, smaller candles here. This seems more like an ABC zigzag correction because of that. Uh, here too, I think it's more looking like a an ABC. Um, this is the biggest, I think, momentum that has been built by several decent candles. We're talking about a rally of about 400 pips. But not only that, it has five or so candles that are you know, decently sized, uh, pretty big candles, uh, not just one massive candle. One massive candle is, is not as, I think, as... Uh, not as, as improbable. I mean, we, we can have a master candle. That's, that's of course, very important, I'm not saying. But I, I think a move like this with five candles actually, in a way, conveys more robustness than just one candle out of the blue. If, if this was one candle that went like this, and now we had all kind of like small dojis, uh, it's it's not as great as actually this. All right, so so I do think there's a, a decent chance for that. Um, if you're in that trade, I think. I'm not sure, Beverly. I think I don't want to. I think still keeping the same stop loss. 
and using the same philosophy makes sense. I mean, obviously there is a potential to take profit here. Um, that could be a way, but what if it if it rallies, hit this target, and then still turns? Um, but I'll leave that up to you. I don't know. It, it it it. I think there's a decent chance of a bounce, but it just could also retest the support trend line again as well, and and then make a bounce or even move to to lower. And you know, it's uh, the trend is strong. There is multiple divergence on a four-hour chart, and I think it could retest this top. Now, if it breaks that, then we might see, of course, a bigger reversal occur. But for the moment, that's that's unclear. Let's see. With loss of momentum, what would you say I should look at the six candle? The six candle rule would apply. I'm not sure. At this moment, we already had more than six candles. Well, it could be used on the hourly chart as this is falling and it hits the 78.6 fib and we see a rally like that and then not breaking this bottom. That could be a bounce off the 78.6 fib. But that's a bit risky, I mean, in the sense that obviously using an hourly chart on a daily trade, I don't know if that's the best combination. It depends. If it, Basically, you have to answer for yourself, do you want to, do you want to have a take profit? In a way, or do you just want to keep trailing it? If you want to keep trailing it, I would just stick to your what you've been using on the daily. Unless you think it's so extended that you could zoom into a lower time frame and trail it on the on a lower time frame. What could happen is that, for instance, on the four hour chart, it bounces off the 78.6 fib, it still makes a hook back like this, and then bounces. And then this could be a four hour trail right here. So, you know, using a daily, keeping the daily trail, using a four hour trail, using an hourly trail, even, although that's zooming in a lot, or a TP, those are your options, I think. So, either keeping it the same or, or, or zooming in slash TP. Pound yen. Um, yes, I can imagine perfectly. That is, a, it's a difficult uh, choice here. I think. I can also imagine you don't want to give too many pips back with with those kind of things developing. Uh, let me take one last look at the daily here. Yeah. Okay. So. Pound yen didn't give really any any flag or so that I was looking for uh, on the hourly. Uh, it was a a tad of a correction here under 15 with the, with a small little dash. Um, that that's probably what Beverly took. It was about 110 pips move. Now making another kind of bear flag and a break of that bear flag already. In fact, let's take a look at that break. The break right here and a bit of a Bit of a wick, so I don't think that that's really a great break. So let's take a look at the four hour chart. And I think looking at this four hour candle is probably the best because this four hour candle has a close and near to low that looks like a good continuation of this momentum. If it doesn't, if there's a wick like this, then I would probably look for a bit of a pullback. The pullback could occur to let me take a look. Let's take a look at the pivot points. To the 38.2 fib, that's R1. R2 is all the way at the 61.8 fib. So there could be a bit of a retracement. You know, what I'm still looking for, on a four hour chart, we, we had a break, pull back, continue. So we're still looking for, the, for a, a pattern on a four hour chart. Even on the hourly chart, still looking for a pattern, in fact. So I do think that this might turn out to be that consolidation zone. And it still might occur. So that could indicate that either yen is going to make a bigger consolidation or the pound might make a bit of a rally if that were to happen. 
Yeah, and it's bouncing off that trend line just a tad. Pound USD close to support. So, yeah, from that point of view, I think we could see a bit of a consolidation zone on this uh, this pound yen. So, uh, from that point of view, I think best to be a bit tactical and, and, and patient and, and wait. It is uh, a bit like uh, the laser gaming I did in, in the weekend. I had a, I tried several strategies. The two that I found best were one is just waiting in in a high traffic area where a lot of of your opponents are running by and and just basically um, aiming on them as they as they pass. Laser gaming once again it's a it's it's a game where um, you wear a pack on your body and if the laser hits your sensor um, you basically get points and if you get hit the other person gets points uh, nothing happens just <laughs> points nothing uh, serious uh, regarding uh, harmful for, for persons or something like that and um, yeah that was a good one and I noticed that um, basically kind of giving like backups to my teammates often enough or moving at a, at a at a decent pace, but not too fast, because then you kind of walk into traps and stuff like that. So, uh, so that was a lot of fun, actually. I really enjoyed it. I mean, the last time I played was, I did, played it in the past ten and twenty years ago. Um, I liked it then, and I still like it. <laughs> so that hasn't changed, um, and it wasn't too too bad. I was one of the better players. Uh, we, you get a scorecard at the end. You know how many how many successful hits you had, how many times you got hit, how many points you have, um, you know, all kind of statistics and stuff like that. So um, I like that to look at those statistics, of course. And uh, yeah, really, it was really fun. Did anyone play laser gaming by any chance? Did anyone try that? So from that point of view, I think it's better to be a bit of a sniper here, better to be uh, cautious and wait for that pattern to occur. All right, Maria says New Zealand has broken trend line, one hour chart to the upside. Let's take a look. I think Maria is talking about this trend line. And uh, let's see. I can see uh, your interest in that. We got a support trend line close by as well. Price showing a pin bar at that trend line. Maybe if we put a fib here too. 61.8 fib and if we put a fib from here to here we were very close to that target as you can see or yeah very very close so a lot of good reasons here got a break of the trend line indeed but the break has been quite corrective so far this has been slow a slow mover. Oh, where's my drawing tool? So if I look at the four hour chart, we got the fourth candle here. Okay. So it looks like it can make a dip back at this moment. That could be an interesting idea indeed to look at this confluence of support for a bounce potential. That makes a lot of sense to me. Of course, you never know, it could break and move down to the 78.6 fib, but that's something that can always occur at bounce or break spot. Otherwise, it seems like a decent bounce spot. Could be a hook back for, sorry, could be a hook back for more upside indeed. The other method could be a break of this trend line, for instance, or a break above this resistance at 68.16. Um, either a good candle close like this, for instance, 
that could be the signal. Let's say the, the trigger, the trigger is indicating like, okay, it's actually showing what I want to see. And then the potential entry could be just a simple, small little retracement of that candle, for instance, or even the candle close. Stop loss probably below this bottom. Yep, so good tip from Maria to look at this pair. Ozzy broke that trend line I talked about yesterday. Hook back to it. But if it breaks above that trend line, it could be back in depth trend. So this is also a bounce or break spot in a way. We could put a trend line here and connect the dots a bit more. So we have another interesting zone. Bit of a mixed picture. I mean, if you look at yesterday's candle, bearish. This is lot looking like a corrective. So I think that probably either a break here or a break here might be the best, but not certainly not now, I would say. Ultimately, this euro yen is also looking very, very bearish. Same like the pound yen. But the question is, will it still make maybe uh, one more correction? But I'm not sure about that, in fact. Let's take a look. Your dollar is moving a bit lower. I guess it depends on the euro. If, uh, if the euro still bounces soon, it will probably still make an extension. But Again, was one of those bigger movers on the heat map. Massive move down. There was divergence between these bottoms, these tops, excuse me. And getting a bit of a corrective pattern. That's actually great. A lot of momentum here. So I think uh, that this correction pattern is, is a perfect uh, break. And then, sorry, kind of a pause, better said. And if it then breaks, I think that could be a good setup for continuation. I like that odd yen for, uh, for downside. By the way, uh, what is MMOs? Is that multiplayer? Oh, no, not sure. So I like this odd yen. Uh, and sorry, that was for um, from Beverly, by the way, who mentioned that. So let's let's see. I'm not sure about the term. You're in New Zealand. <clears throat> Yeah, I talked about yesterday that I want to see a, a bullish candle, right? Right here. Otherwise, it's 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 not breaking and it's actually at resistance. So we didn't break it. We have a wick, <clears throat> half of the candle is wick, no strong close, trend line not broken. So that does not look at the moment at least like it's breaking. Now, is it a strong bearish reversal signal? No, not in my opinion either. Uh, not looking at this daily chart. So for me, it's neutral at this point. Nothing wrong with neutral. Um, I think that neutral is fine, especially when you look like a lot of currency pairs. You want to want to find the ones that uh, are interesting for you and have no problem with skipping some pairs that really look neutral and don't say, don't speak to you or don't find you don't find interesting. There's nothing wrong with that. Right? We don't want to, we don't want to ch start chasing price uh, over the board and start outguessing and second guessing and all that kind of nonsense, right? So ultimately, I think that if I look at higher time frames, uh, a bearish, a bullish break, sorry, uh, might have a bit better papers 
just because of the fact that we had a wick here, we broke last week's high. Um, but you know, it's still in a triangle, so difficult to say. We're challenging that resistance. Alrighty. Let's see. Pound Swissy. Looks like it's making retracement. There is divergence at this moment. So this was this was a break. Uh, perhaps here. Not a great trend line. Maybe if I do it like this, it's a bit better. That's probably a tad better trend line. So we had that break, but now it's making a reversal or retracement because of divergence. So that's a pattern to be to be cautious of. Um, but otherwise, I think it still looks bearish. The break still looks good, but we might see a pattern here too, uh, or I like to see a pattern before trading it. All right, on New Zealand, still looking for basically a bounce off these fibs, off this light green fib. It's at the 38.2 fib, might go lower for a move up. All right, why? Because we had a break of uh, this resistance with a good momentum. So I think that this could be a pullback from our upside. So still looking for an on New Zealand bounce, um, maybe at the 50 fib, for instance, at 110. Nice psychological round level as well. So I think that. That would be a good confluence. 55 there too. All right. Let's see. Anything else? Pound is in there maybe. Well, looks bearish at the moment. Clear trend line like this, resistance trend line, and clear break of this triangle to the downside, hook back to that triangle. Sixty one point eight fib. Interesting. Well, let me take a quick look at, I think this is an interesting one. Let me just quickly, quickly look at the pivot points. All right, we can take this fib off. This rally is a bit worrying, perhaps, but you see what could happen is if we do get a bigger zigzag, we might go all the way up here. And make a kind of a recovery rate like that. So that makes it a bit problematic. There is divergence between these bottoms as well. So there could be a zigzag like that. That would be a great shorting area, but um, price is not there yet. But if it does, that might make sense. At the moment, I'm uh, still a bit cautious about this one due to that. Well, if it breaks, I, I think it has to break at least below this, this, probably this bottom to have a bit of a, a downside continuation to, let me put a fit from here to here. 
bounce right at the 61.8 fib. So the next one would be uh, this 78.6 fib. So if it breaks this, that would be the target. Now, it would probably have to be, I would probably trade it on a five minute chart. I would have to probably see a move down, a bounce, and then a break. And there could be a, you know, a bit of a scalp trade right there, but it's tight. Or otherwise, maybe a break, pull back, and then a bounce again. You know, this is a tight zone for this particular currency pair because it just moves a lot. Uh, so let me know if you have any other currency pairs you want to take a look at. Just wanted to remind you that uh, there is the deposit bonus available. You can go to admiralmarkets.com, click on Get Your Bonus, and play around with this slider to see uh, what the benefit be could be for you, campaign rules, risk disclosure, all of that is, is is very important to look at. Um, and also, as you know, Nenet and I like to to help traders. Uh, you know, so if you want to join our markets, uh, let us know because we could we can help you extra uh, on top of uh, the deposit bonus with some extra education. So you know, write us an email if you're interested, and we can help you along with that as well. So that is something that I think is it's a great combination for for you to capitalize on, especially now with April and May, to to uh, the deposit bonus. So um, you know if you're interested in that, if you're interested in joining, you can just click on get your bonus, or uh, or you can write us an email as well, and we can help you uh, with that uh, if you like by sending us an email to here. All right. Yeah, good, good, good idea. I we talked a lot about analysis. What is my top trade? I talked a lot about patterns um, on pound yen, for instance. I think dollar yen indeed is is definitely going to be high on the list, if not number one. Pound yen is the bounce to the upside. I think could be an interesting reversal bounce trade. As well, probably number two. Uh, dollar yen pullback sh short at 50 or 61.8 fib, or if you're very patient, uh, even 78.6. Uh, your dollar bounce if it does get down to 113, 112, 75 for upside. But I'm really cautious. I'm really taking a look. If if this starts to pick up too much momentum. Uh, and it keeps showing bearish candles like this. I'm on the sidelines. I really want some some confirmation of, of a bounce. Um, let's see. Kiwi, also interesting, I think. The hook back or break. Those probably are my top... Top... Um, Currency pairs at this moment, top ideas. Uh, because at this moment, I think I'd maybe that's why I spend more time on these three because I don't see on the crosses. I mean, I know the euro yen, pound yen are also bearish, so you know that obviously is also interesting. If it if it makes those patterns and then starts to turn at those patterns or break those patterns, I do think that's interesting. But that seems like it would take a bit of time. So let's see. But that could be interesting. Um, talked about a pound out reversal pattern. Not high on my list personally. Yeah, that's, a, that's probably it for the moment. All right, that's my discretionary kind of wave analysis uh, approach, but uh, then and I also use more rules-based uh, trading uh, that is uh, called Accu and Harp, and you know it doesn't take into account 
you know the the patterns perhaps that that I see as a wave wave trader or wave analysis and stuff like that. Those are more rules based. But let's say from a from a technical pattern discretionary point of view of trading, uh, I think that the summary I just made, I think that's that would be the most interesting things that I can see at the moment. But you know there are a lot of ways you can look at the charts that maybe I didn't think of when I was doing the the trading. You know if I would maybe look. Who knows if I look at, I don't know, um, uh, which one that you're, you're in New Zealand, maybe on a weekly chart, you know, maybe I bumped into a trade. I just didn't think about, you know, there's always, if you really go into detail, if you really start analyzing various things, uh, moving averages, trend lines, uh, fibs, uh, patterns, candlesticks, then, um, there are quite a lot of factors to consider of course too. So, and a lot of currency pairs we're looking at. So, you know, I, 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 I compliment your patience when going through this webinar because I understand that it might, a lot of me talking, you know, it's not easy maybe to keep track of all these time frames and currency pairs. So great job on that. And if you have any questions, by all means, always let me know, no problem. Um, but, you know, looking at what we looked at, the scope of what we looked at, I think those make the most sense. Uh, from, Webinar point of view, if I can grab it, here we go. We got tonight, then it's going to take a look at new candlestick patterns. So I'm curious about that. I, I don't know. I'm curious what he's going to say. Uh, and uh, that will be tonight at uh, 5 p.m. UK time. We got the same time tomorrow evening, too, where we take a look at, well, it's actually a great topic, discretionary trading. Uh, and we, I think, talked about that. Normally, we talk about that already quite a lot, I think, this week. Even more so, probably. So learn how to set up uh, this analysis. That's tomorrow's focus. Uh, the calculator, you mean the slide bar for the bonus? You can find, no problem at all. You can find very simply just by going to the main page, admiralmarkets.com. Uh, there is a, a special introduction here grow stronger get or click on the blue button that says get your bonus scroll just a tad lower and you can see the slider and you can move it left and right yep great so there we go there's the webinars once again and uh, we we'll hope to See you on board on our markets uh, and otherwise, uh, hopefully later today or tomorrow. Thanks for joining and wish you good trading. Cheers.